Hello everybody, in this video we're gonna talk about how to solve polynomial equations that have fractions, okay? So there's really only one thing we need to focus on and that is getting rid of the fractions, right? Nobody wants to deal with them and we don't have to, so let's get rid of them. So how do we get rid of them? We multiply each side of the equation by the least common denominator, right? So we've, heard, we've all heard of LCM, least common multiple. It's the same thing here. We're just looking at the denominator of these fractions and we wanna find the least common multiple of those denominators. And that's what we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by. One thing to remember, whenever we're solving polynomial equations, we can use the zero product property. So in order to use that, we wanna make sure our expression, our polynomial expression is equal to zero. So if we look on number one, this example right here, this one is already equal to zero, so we're good there. But notice on number two, this one is not equal to zero. So we're gonna to wanna to get that constant on the left side with the binomial so that now it's equal to zero, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's look at example number one. We have x squared plus two thirds x plus one over nine equals zero. So we look at our two denominators. We have a three, we have a nine. So those are multiples, right? So our common multiple, our least common multiple would be nine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by nine, okay? So on the left side, we're gonna distribute that nine to all three of our terms. So now we have nine x squared plus and there's two ways to look at this. We could say nine times two is 18, 18 divided by three gives me six X, or you could actually divide first. You could do nine divided by three, which is three, three times two, which is also six. And then plus one, because nine times one over nine, the nines just cancel out. And now we're equal to zero, okay? So now what we can do is we can go ahead and factor this. Well, A is not one, A is equal to nine. So really we would need to use the magic X and go through all of that. Um, I'll link a description, uh, I'll link a video to that. I'll post a link to that in the description below. Um, I always get that messed up, I don't know why. But anyway, but if we look at this, it is a trinomial, so let's check and see if it's a perfect square trinomial, because if it is, that makes factoring a whole lot easier. Well, we look at A, A is nine, we look at C and C is one. So that means since those two are perfect squares, this has a good chance of being a perfect square trinomial. So remember to check, we wanna make, we wanna take B, we wanna divide it by two, we wanna square it. So B is six, so if we do six divided by two, that's three, and three squared is nine. So if A times C is also nine, then we do have a perfect square trinomial, and we do have that because A is nine and C is one, nine times one is nine. So now we can factor this using the perfect square trinomial pattern. So we're gonna take A, and what we would do is we would square, right? So if right now our first term is nine X squared. So in order for us to have a term of our binomial, because once we factor this perfect square trinomial, it's gonna factor as the square of a binomial. So in our binomial, we have term A and term B, right? So in order for us to take the first term of our binomial and end up at nine X squared, we had to have a monomial that was squared. So three X, if we square it, we would square three, we would square X, so nine X squared. So we have a squared plus two times a times b, and then plus b squared. Okay, well, let's figure out what b would, would be here. Um, so in the middle, if I have two times three x, and I know that I want this term to be equal to six x, well, two times three x is already six x, so I need to multiply just by one. So if we multiply by one there, then that means b is one. So now in order to form our, our binomial, we can just take our factor or our term for A and say three X and our term for B, and we can say three X plus one quantity squared. Now remember, this is equal to zero, and we're trying to figure out what X is equal to. So now since we have a square of a binomial, we could actually take the square root of both sides to get rid of the exponent of a two, square root of zero is still zero. So now we have three X plus one equals zero, and now we're just solving a two-step equation. We can subtract one from both sides. So now we have three X equals negative one. And now we divide both sides by three. So we get X equals negative one third. And that would be our answer for number one. So that's called the root of the equation. Or in this case, since it factored as the square of a binomial, we call it a repeated root, okay? All right, let's take a look at number two. Um, let's go ahead and add 49 over 36 to both sides, because remember we wanna set this equal to zero so that we can use the zero product property. So now this gives us x squared minus seven over three x plus 49 over 36, and now we can say it's equal to zero. 
Now let's look at our denominators. We have three, we have 36. So let's multiply both sides by 36 because you know we wanna get rid of those fractions. So now we're gonna distribute this 36. So we get 36 x squared minus. And so now once again, you could do 36 times seven, uh, but that might take you a little bit to think about, right? So you could also do 36 divided by three, which is 12 and then 12 times seven and you get 84. <coughs> so we have 36 x squared minus 84 x plus, and right here we're gonna say 49 divided by 36, and that's gonna give us just 49, right? Those 36s are gonna cancel, and now that's equal to zero. So once again, we have a trinomial. 36 is a perfect square, 49 is a perfect square, so good chance this is a perfect square trinomial. We just need to make sure our middle term B, if we divide it by two and square it, it's equal to 36 times 49. So if we do 36 times 49, that's gonna give us 1,000, so I'm gonna write over here, 36 times 49, that's gonna give us 1,764. So for this to be a perfect square trinomial, I need to take 84 and divide it by two and square it, and it needs to equal 1,764. So 84 divided by two, we get 42, and 42 squared, we can type that in the calculator, and we get 1,764. So that means, yes, this is a perfect square trinomial, so it's gonna factor as the square of a binomial. So once we factor it, let's look at our trinomial right here. So our first term is 36x squared. So essentially, we wanna take the square root of 36 and x. So this would be 6x squared. Now there's a, a subtraction here now, so this is minus 2ab. So x was, um, or a was 6x. So now we have two and we have 6x. If we multiply those together, that gives us 12x. And no, we wanna end up with 84x. So 12 times what is 84? That would be seven. And then we have plus seven squared because seven squared is 49. So now we can take our a term and our b term and we can write our square of a binomial. Now in this case, since we did have subtraction, it's gonna be six x minus seven squared. And remember this is equal to zero. And so now we can take the square root of both sides. That gets rid of the exponent. So now we have six x minus seven equals zero. And now we just add seven and divide by six and we get x is equal to seven over six, okay? So that would be the solution to number two, the repeated root, since it was the square of a binomial, and that is how you solve polynomial equations when you have to deal with fractions.